What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the next stimulus package, what's going on in the United States, Washington, D.C., money, investing, and the $3.5 trillion stimulus package, which is in the House of Representatives. They're working on finalizing this package and moving towards a vote here very, very quickly. Also, the physical infrastructure package, which is going to be voted on on Monday. The House of Representatives is trying to vote on the stimulus package before them. And uh, we're also working towards, unfortunately, a government shutdown that will happen on the end of this month, September 30th at midnight, if they don't pass a bill to prevent a government shutdown uh, that will happen at September 30th at midnight. We're also, unfortunately, working towards a government default, which is a separate than a government shutdown. We have a government shutdown and a government default. We have never had a government default. And Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says that we will have a government default where the government will run out of money if we are not able to pass a bill one way or another sometime in October. Uh, we have an independent report that says that will happen somewhere around October 15th which will be the first ever government default. It's similar to the government literally running out of money and not able to pay its bills, pay the interest on its bills, and uh, would be a cataclysmic event. A could cause an economic downfall. Um, it would be very, very, very terrible for our economic everything. Um, yeah, it's, it's the equivalent of the government running out of money. That is going to happen sometime in October, says Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. So we have the stimulus package that the House is trying to pass, the infrastructure package that Nancy Pelosi says is going to happen on Monday, the stimulus package that was supposed to be passed before then, and uh, also the government shutdown that is going to happen on the 30th at midnight, which is now five days away. And the government is going to run out of money sometime in October if they can't raise the debt limit ceiling, which the Republicans are currently refusing to agree to. And uh, we're going to go over all that in this video as well. Yeah, you can you even believe all this? Yeah, so I'll keep you up to date on all these items. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. It's free to do so. Uh, we cover everything going on in our country here today. New videos come out every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you find these videos helpful, don't forget to hit the like button for us down below. Also, the uh, Arizona recount election audit uh, results are in as of yesterday. And uh, even Fox News is reporting that the election results are in and they did refind again for the multiple time that uh, Joe Biden is the winner in Maricopa County. Uh, even Fox News is reporting this and uh, they actually found out that Joe Biden actually had slightly more votes than last time in this Republican led um, and Republican backed uh, election review, as you can see here in uh, this article from The Hill. GOP-backed Arizona election review confirms a Biden 2020 win. So again, another article here, five takeaways from the Arizona audit results. The Arizona Senate on Friday heard testimony from the firm it hired to conduct a so-called audit of more than 2 million votes cast in Maricopa County during the 2020 elections, the latest in a cavalcade of election disinformation spread at the behest of former President Donald Trump. The audit has cost Arizona taxpayers and private donors millions of dollars, and even some of the Republicans who voted to authorize it in the first place began to raise concerns over the handling of it by cyber ninjas, the firm of the at the heart of the audit. Republican State Senator Paul Boyer said, quote, they wasted nearly six million dollars to tell us what we already knew. Meanwhile, exacerbating an already unhealthy political environment, the cyber ninjas led team found that Biden's margin of victory in Maricopa County was actually 360 votes wider than uh, they had officially found in the first place. So 
Biden actually had more votes than uh, than had first been found. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Next up is Pramila Jayapal, who's the leader of the Progressive Caucus. And we have a lot of fighting going on between the Democrats. Uh, Pramila Jayapal has actually um, offered to meet with Senator Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema to help gain their votes. And check this out. New information coming out from Senator Joe Manchin that he might single-handedly upend the child tax credit. These are these monthly stimulus checks that are expected to be in this next stimulus package. Um, remember, these monthly checks, the child tax credits, $250 to $300 per month, um, that right now go out to about 65 million families, um, 65 million children. Of course, they go to the parent or the guardian who claims the child. Um, those end at the end of this year. So on December 31st, those monthly payments will stop. The first six months of those payments, uh, January through June, you will get on your tax return for the 2021 when you file that next year. Um, but those monthly checks will end at the end of this year if they don't pass this next package. Uh, so those monthly checks are expected to continue on until 2025 for 65 million children. But number one, they have to pass this next package. And number two, Senator Joe Manchin is trying to throw a wrench in things. He's doing a very Republican-like thing in there. He's, he, he wants to do a work requirement for these checks for children. So number one is that He's the only Democrat to ever say that there should be a work requirement for these checks for children. These checks are primarily what the Democrats say is that they're supposed to help feed children, clothe children, help them get a roof over their head. And um, they're only $250 to $300 per month for each child. So in some ways, it's not really a lot of month. A lot of, it's not really a lot of money. $250 to $300. I mean, if you think about that, I mean, $250 is not really going to make anybody rich. But Joe Manchin, check this out. Check out what he's saying here. I'll zoom this in here so you can see it here a little bit. Joe Manchin, the West Virginia senator, insists that the work requirements be included in the bill, despite all the evidence suggesting that they are unnecessary and ineffective. Yeah. Yeah. Now, here's the thing that's making a lot of Democrats and probably a lot of viewers here think that he's even more and more Republican as the days go by. A dino, as some of our viewers would say here, a Democrat in name only, and, um, and uh, the opposite of a rhino, a Republican in name only, which has often been um, uh, an acronym for a while. But um, he acts more and more like a Republican because um, this is something that some Republicans have said, Marco Rubio and a few Republicans. This is the first time a Democrat has ever said that there should be a work requirement for the child tax credits. Now, remember that the Democrats actually removed the income requirement from the child tax credits. There has always been an uh, income requirement to receive the uh, child tax credits, or maybe not an, uh, a work requirement. Well, yeah, a work requirement, because there was always an, um, an income requirement. So you had to have earned income to get the child tax credits. So remember, the child tax credits have been around for like 23 years since like 1998. They started off at like four or $500, then they went up to $1,000, and then former President Donald Trump raised them to $2,000 in the 2017 Trump tax cuts. So um, even if you have children that are like 30 years old, uh, you would have gotten the child tax credits. They may have only been $1,000 or $500, um, but you would have gotten child tax credits along the way when they were 15 or 10 or seven, as long as you were filing tax returns, as long as you had earned income. So, cause they've been around for 23 years, but you had to have earned income and you had to file a tax return, okay? But the Democrats changed that in the third stimulus check package to where you didn't need to have any earned income and you didn't need to file a tax return at all. By the way, I want to say this again one more time because um, this is very, very important. I'll link this down below in the description of this video to the IRS child tax credit portal. 
again, because this helps millions and millions of people, and I get a lot of people to watch my videos. If you know anybody that this might pertain to, this is very important information. This is an IRS website. I'll put this down in the description of this video, okay? Um, there's a tool here. There's a website that you can click to check to view your payments. If you're missing any payments, you can click on this tool and check to see the status of your payments if you're missing any payments. You can update your bank account information, check to see if you're enrolled for payments, et cetera, et cetera. Also, if you haven't received your child tax credit payments, um, you can check to see if you're eligible here. And also, if you're not a tax filer, if you don't file tax returns, um, and if you haven't gotten your child tax credit payments, the re reason you haven't gotten them is you have to fill out this non-filer tool, okay? The Democrats changed this for 2021 that if you don't file tax returns and you don't have any earned income at all, let's say uh, you're on Social Security and you're a non-tax filer, you can get the child tax credit payments if you have children, okay? You just have to fill out this form or you have to fill up this, yeah, this form right here. Right here, if you, are a, if you aren't required to file a tax return, and you haven't given us your information already, you will need to give us some basic information for the child tax credit. Enter your information here. This is an official IRS website. Again, this I, I'm here helping you guys every single day with this information. So again, if you're not a normal tax filer, if you don't file tax returns, and you have children, and you haven't gotten your child tax credit, your monthly payments, you have to fill out this form or else you're literally going to miss out on $3,000 to $3,600 per child. Please share this video with anybody that this might be applicable to because they literally could miss out on thousands of dollars if they don't do this critical step. Please, this will really help them out a lot. The link will be in the description of this video, which if you're on a mobile phone, you have to click the little down arrow next to the title or maybe even click the title of this video to open the description, and the link will be in the description to the official IRS website. Okay, with that being said, I'm sorry. It's just I have, I'm trying to help out as many people as possible. I see a lot of comments all the time from people that say, I haven't got my child tax credit payments. I, guess I see some people say, I haven't gotten them ever. And it's just like, I know I can help out as many people as possible, so I want to say that because... One, you can check the status of your payments, check out where they are, check out where you're eligible. And two, if you're not a filer, you may have to fill that out. So pretty much that website can help you with that all. I'll put another website in there too. It's getctc.org. It's another IRS website that kind of answers all your questions and stuff. So if you're missing payments or anything, two websites for you in the description. Okay, next up, we'll go to Pramila Jayapal with... Um, more information on the stimulus package and its upcoming votes on stimulus package, the infrastructure package, and the debt limit ceiling. Here she is. I want to turn now to one of the key players in these negotiations, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. She's the chair of the House Progressive Caucus. And Congresswoman, we all learned in the last couple of hours from Speaker Pelosi that there will be, she says, a reconciliation vote next week. Uh, we're going to see a markup this weekend. I know you'll be working long hours. So uh, is a promise of a reconciliation vote enough to get progressives to a yes on the bipartisan infrastructure bill first? Hi, Garrett. It's great to see you. Um, no, that won't be enough, but we really do support Pelosi's, uh, the Speaker's efforts to move the reconciliation bill along, just because there are some final pieces that need to be put together uh, in order to say this is the vision that we have for, reconcil for the reconciliation bill, for the Build Back Better Act. So I'm looking forward to going into budget markup. The discussions are continuing both you know, behind the scenes, privately, with the White House, with the Senate, with the House, with some of us uh, intra-chamber conversations. And we are going to get both these bills done. That is my firm belief. Um, that is what I said to the president the other day. The progressives, frankly, have had the president's back from the very beginning. This is the Build Back Better agenda that the president laid out to Congress many, many months ago, back in February. And we have been saying we're not leaving one part of the agenda behind and giving up on the idea of child care, paid leave, community college, health care. These are things that people will feel immediately, along with making sure that we address immigration and that we address climate change. These are critical priorities for the Democratic agenda. 
So we will get the reconciliation bill as close as we can, but the conversations obviously have to be with the Senate. There's no point in just saying well, the House will pass. We've always said we need to pre-conference it. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, what does that effort look like? I was struck by the fact that these White House meetings uh, this week, you had the progressives in one meeting, the moderates in another meeting. When are you and Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema going to sit down in a room together and have this conversation uh, directly? Well, I'm very happy to do that. And actually, uh, there have been those the, the beginnings of that starting to happen. So I think, you know, let's let's. Well, what does that mean? What are the what are the beginnings of those conversations? Is somebody sending somebody an Outlook invite here or what's going on? Yeah, we, we've gotten requests to have those meetings. So we're happy okay. to do that and we'll get scheduled very soon. So, you know, my, look, my thing is that we've got to understand the bipartisan infrastructure negotiations. Remember when they were supposed to be done one week and then that week stretched to another week and then another week? Oh, yes. And <laughs> Remember it really well, Garrett. You were there every step of the way. But the reality is we just need a little bit more time. I don't think we need a lot of time, but we do need a little bit more time. And we need the urgency. And so there's no point in, uh, you know, Monday is an arbitrary date. It could, be, uh, it could be moved easily because the reality is the bill coming up and not having the votes is not something that the speaker will be willing to do. And we don't have the votes for it. So let's just finish Let's remember we're all part of the same team. This is the president's Democratic agenda, and we're all Democrats. So let's just finish this, get the reconciliation bill done, as was agreed upon in the Senate when those senators voted for the bipartisan infrastructure bill. They did so on the condition that this exact thing that we're saying right now is what happens. The reconciliation bill passes, and then we'll be happy to vote for the infrastructure bill. I've noticed that you and Bernie Sanders, who is obviously the progressive kind of championing this on the Senate side, have taken slightly different tones in how you talk about the, what's going on with the reconciliation bill. You keep talking about wanting to continue to negotiate. As you, I don't have to tell you, you're not going to be able to negotiate up from $3.5 trillion. It seems to me that any further negotiations probably mean this bill in some ways gets smaller. I understand there's no priority you want to see let go. And I noted that you talk, told Andrew Mitchell the idea of maybe like sort of changing the time frame for some of these programs is perhaps where you see potential movement here. Can you talk to me about what it looks like if in that meeting with Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, the price tag has to come down for them to be on board? Do you see that by adjusting the time frame of the pro you want to get all these programs into action, but maybe some of them are for six years, not 10? Or is, is that how you see this progressing? Well, when I say I want to keep negotiating, it means that we have put on the table what our vision is. And what the president said the other day that he asked the group that came in to the White House before us um, to give him was, what is it you're for? We've heard a lot about what people are mm -hmm. against. What I want to know is, okay, if you if you if you don't like something in the bill, what is it? Is it child care? Is it health care? What is it that you want to take out? Because the number is sort of arbitrary. In fact, Garrett, I think I said this to you the other day. This is a zero dollar bill. I heard the president say this today right. because I made it clear to him I thought we needed to start talking about the fact that this is all paid for with taxes on the wealthiest individuals and the largest corporations paying their fair share. It's a zero dollar bill. So the question is not what is the price tag at the end of the day. The question is, what do you want to do? And we put forward our vision. So if there's something you don't like, tell me what it is. I want to hear. And that's what, uh, you know, I think these conversations need to be about. So the current plan right now, unless anything changes, things are changing rapidly here, um, is that the on Monday in the Senate, they are going to be voting on a combined bill to prevent a government shutdown and to raise the debt limit. This is the bill that has already passed in the House. The problem is, is all the Democrats voted yes to prevent a government shutdown and to prevent a government default by raising the debt limit. But all the Republicans voted no. They voted basically to let the government shut down and to let the government default. The problem is, is that when this goes to the Senate, we need at least 10 Republicans to vote yes on this or else uh, we're headed towards a government shutdown and a government default. That is expected to be voted on on Monday. And if we don't see 10 Republicans vote yes on that, um, we're headed towards a government default and a government shutdown. Now, if that vote fails on Monday in the Senate, 
The Democrats can pass a bill on their own through the reconciliation process, which is the stimulus package. But the question is, how long will that take? As you know, that's it's a it's a process. It's not just a vote and a vote. They have to have debate on the floor. It's a, it's a long process. Okay, if you remember the third stimulus check pack, I mean they're going through it really quickly here. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to have it done in five days. We will see. We may have a government shutdown. We may also have a government default. We already have Democrats saying that the Democrats lack the time to raise the debt limit on their own and that uh, we may see a default and or a government shutdown. So um, this is what Democrats are already saying, that this could happen. So, and that's why I like to show you guys these headlines. I like to show you these interviews uh, so you guys know that this stuff is real, uh, that I'm not just making this stuff up. I mean, this is literally here from Bloomberg.com. So uh, that's why I show you guys this stuff so you guys know that this stuff is legit. That's why you guys know that these voting dates, uh, this article right here, the spending vote on Monday as agencies prepare for possible shutdown. You know that this stuff is real. Next article here, Nancy Pelosi says the House will move forward next week on the physical infrastructure bill and the $3.5 trillion budget bills, the uh, stimulus package, the American Families Plan. They are still expected to vote on the physical infrastructure bill on Monday. But um, as we heard uh, Pramila Jayapal there, the leader of the Progressive Caucus say, uh, the physical infrastructure bill may fail. It may fail if the stimulus package is not voted on before Monday, which is looking like it may not happen. So the physical infrastructure bill may be voted on on Monday, but it may fail. Yeah, so we may have two votes on Monday and neither of them might not pass. Yeah, it's, it's going to be absolutely crazy. And then... By the time Monday comes, Monday is the 27th. Three days later, we're going to have a government shutdown. Now, remember that a government shutdown is different than a debt limit default. From what I understand, uh, the last time we had a government shutdown, Social Security payments did continue through a government shutdown. Okay, um, from what I understand there. So just keep that in mind. But a default has never happened before. That is expected to happen sometime in uh, October. And um, I showed you that on the screen here, and we've seen Bernie Sanders say that himself. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer have said um, in a statement as well, and I showed you that on the screen, that Social Security, the military, school systems, states, everything uh, could be at risk if the government defaults. That's where the government runs out of money um, if that happens sometime in October, that's different than the government shutdown that's going to happen on October 1st, that everything could be at risk if the government literally defaults and runs out of money. So I'm going to keep you up to date on all these situations, the government shutdown, the government default, passing the stimulus package, and the infrastructure package. Uh, I'll keep you up to date on all these things, and I'll show it to you right on the screen from credible sources. Um all the different news sources. I don't pick and choose sides, Republicans or Democrats. I'll show it to you from all of them and all as well as the stimulus package and the infrastructure package. So make sure to subscribe down below. It's completely free to do so. Uh, after subscribing, click the bell icon so you can get notifications when we go live with new videos, which is every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to share this video down below with your friends and family. And also make sure to tweet, email, and call your senators and representatives and tell them that we need to include a fourth stimulus check in this next package. Besides the child tax credit monthly checks for children, please tell them to include a fourth stimulus check on top of that for everybody else. So um, there are probably going to be multiple different stimulus provisions like child tax credits and adult tax credits and multiple different other things, which we'll have to see what will be in there. And once we get the bill, we're going to have to weed through thousands of pages to even figure out what's going to be in there. Um, and once we get that bill, I'll, we'll figure out, it may take us days even to even figure out what's going to be in there and all the different things that could be in there. Uh, but we'll go through it together. And remember, even after they released the bill, in the last, in the second stimulus check package and the third stimulus check package, they added things in at the very last moment 
Uh, so we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. So make sure to subscribe. I'll keep you up to date. You can click this video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video is how the Senator Bernie Sanders is pushing to add a $1,000 stimulus debit card in the next package. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.